Welcome back. Prince Charles visited St. Lucia over the weekend and the event was met with great fanfare. Trisha Lionel was present and filed this report. The prince is coming. That he did. Prince Charles arrived in Viewfort at about 4 p.m. on March 17th with the pomp and ceremony expected when a member of the royal family makes an official visit. The Prince of Wales left about five hours later at approximately 8 p.m. as he continued his tour of the Caribbean. The visit was lauded by Minister Belrose weeks prior as a means of giving attention to the south of the island as part of independence celebrations especially as there were accusations leveled at the government for focusing independence celebrations too much in the north. In preparation of the event, the grass was manicured. Several small fixes to the Philip Master ground were also made, and even a nearby bus stop was repainted. In much the same way, when the prince visited first in 1989 and later in 2008, school students wearing uniforms and waving miniature flags could be seen in the filter capacity stands. Their parents, teachers, specially invited guests, and the curious who just wanted to see the prince were also in attendance. The prime minister addressed the hundreds present. Mama is a Lucy. Eh. Mama is a four. Your Royal Highness, despite my defeat by your son, Prince Harry, during the cricket match between us at the Darren Sammy Stadium, a loss that I personally attribute only to the famous and immense hospitality of the people of St. Lucia. Let's just say, I played my part in that hospitality. Our nation, and in particular our youth, continues to cherish the memories and historical significance of the visit of Prince Henry of Wales to St. Lucia. We recognize the positive and active role and contributions of young people in promoting development, peace, democracy, and in protecting and promoting other Commonwealth values such as tolerance and understanding, including respect for other cultures. The prince received a royal salute before the military parade was held. Clearly battling the wind, the Prince of Wales spoke to St. Lucia's progress over the past 40 years. The people of St. Lucia have so much of which they can be proud. Today, the name of this land, the only country in the world to bear the name of a woman, is known the world over. 1.2 million international visitors flock to these shores each year. Your sportsmen and women and your musicians are making a name for themselves internationally, as are young entrepreneurs such as Johanan Dujon, whom I met recently in London, and whose company making organic fertilizer from toxic sargassum seaweed, the Caribbean's first indigenous agriculture biotech company, is just one example of St. Lucia's abundant talent and creativity. His Royal Highness was not immune to the cleverly worded jest at his hair as he spoke. In the end, it seemed the students were the most excited during the event. So we feel excited, love the ceremony, feels good. Yeah, and um, I see you have a lot of flags and stuff. Are you very excited with, um, seeing the prince? Yeah, very. Yeah. What about you? Are you excited? <laughs> I feel proud of my country that he came to us. I feel happy. Why? Because I get to see the prince. It's like the first time um, I really have seen a prince visit to visit Saint Lucia, and it's like a new experience. Experience. For me. Do you want to be royalty as well? Yeah. You can see yourself a princess. Yeah. I'm happy. Why do you feel happy? Because I got to see the prince. You got to see the prince, and are you a princess? Yes. Just, um, do you like that every all your friends are here? Yes. And do you want to see the prince again? Mm-hmm. Oh? Yes. Thank you very much.
While these students seemed cheery, the others on the left stands were not so much as they could not see the stage. The tents were in the way. The three-hour event continued with performances from different artists. That evening, His Royal Highnesses attended a reception hosted by the Governor-General. Among the 500 guests were members of Parliament, groups of Commonwealth awardees, and representatives from the arts and culture in St. Lucia. I am Tresha Lionel for Hot 7 News. The Prince has come and gone. The three-hour event was met by excited children but underwhelmed vendors who were forced to ask, is that it? Newport vendors were unsatisfied during the ceremony, which was lauded as a means of giving the South much-needed attention. Vendors are normally set up directly opposite the Philip Master grounds during national events were told by authorities to establish their stalls and tents further away. This was done for security reasons. In fact, Hot 7 News was reliably informed that the royal family's security personnel was on island weeks before the arrival of Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. One vendor says she went against the orders of the organizers who did not want to set up close to the event. This morning when, when all the turnaround was going, I understood that where they didn't want us there. But then it happened that they didn't want us in the entire area. We ended up being in a hole at the back there where nobody was seeing us. Until when I just make it on my own, I came to the front and that's why I ended up making a little dollar. The salesperson best known as Angel has been a vendor for more than two decades. For her, creating a much needed organization for vendors is one which does not look likely in the South. But do you think that Beaufort perhaps needs a vendors association? to assure that these things don't happen in Viewfort. For my past 20-something years, I don't think these things will last in Viewfort. Why is that? Because there is no cooperation among us vendors. So I don't think so, no. Another vendor with high hopes that the prince's visit would bring exceptional sales shared her disappointment. It was not good. To, it wasn't my expectation. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of the location, but it's not what I was expecting concerning that um, event that happened there. So I'm not sure if it's be no money or if it's that location, but it's not up to date. In the end, every veteran vendor who depends on the uncertainty of sales knows you win some, you lose some. I'm always satisfied with what I do, so it's not a, a bad experience for me. I, I'll know what to do for the next time. So far, so good. I give thanks. I am Tresha Lionel for Hot 7 News. The National Workers' Union and the Bank of Nova Scotia have signed their first collective agreement. Employees of Scotiabank St. Lucia have had to grapple with a measure of uncertainty regarding employment issues given the announced acquisition of the bank by Republic Bank and a protracted collective bargaining process. The National Workers' Union, as of Monday, has been able to bring some level of relief to workers given the signing of their first ever industrial agreement with the Bank of Nova Scotia. Regional industrial relations officials from the bank, along with the leadership and shop stewards of the National Workers' Union, met at the Labour Department on Monday. The officials affixed their signatures to the first industrial agreement between the two entities. What is important is that we have a signed collective agreement which will cover almost 100 staff members at all branches of Nova Scotia, which would span Rodney Bay, Castries and Viewfort. Um, we're talking about benefits coverage, including a 9% wage increase for all staff members, which will also go along with a traveling allowance and mileage allowance for designated traveling officers, which is the first, we believe, in the region when it comes to Scotia Bank um, countries or constituents, if you will. We also have provisions there for paternity leave, we have acting allowance, we also have trade union leave. So it's a very comprehensive document that spans a wide range of benefits and we're very happy and very pleased we were able to come to an agreement as it relates to that. It has yet to be determined whether this first ever collective agreement will be honored once the Scotiabank acquisition is a done deal. Union officials say an inaugural meeting will be scheduled with Republic Bank in the coming weeks to chart the way forward. What we know is that it has not been finalized as yet, so we don't want to make any, um, you know, not rash statements, but any kind of judgments before anything is laid out. So what we're doing right now is in the best interest, at least for us, in terms of our members and the management of the bank. We've been able to complete the negotiations and sign up on the collective agreement. That's one step. The second step will be to meet the staff, to have the general staff meeting to lay out the entire approach to them. The third step is to make sure the red show is paid to everybody. And the fourth step will be meeting with the Republic Bank officials once we have finalized that first phase. And then we can meet forward because we don't want to say anything and then you know something has happened. 
So we're taking it step by step because you'll appreciate the situation. Acting Deputy Labor Commissioner Cornelia Jobatis presided over Monday's historic signing of the Scotiabank NWU Collective Agreement. You're watching the Hot 790 News. We'll be right back.